You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible is Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. In this week's program, Father Paul begins his discussion of Leviticus, drawing on passages from Ezekiel and Numbers to illustrate how characters in the story twist the command of God. I am happy to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. Before starting Leviticus, I would like to go on an aside and recap what I showed time and again, that the law, especially when it comes to the building and the sacrifices and the priesthood and the service of the temple, which is the main topic of Leviticus, is misleading if one does not have the entire scripture in mind. And that is, to my mind, the reason for the downfall and the silliness of what we refer to as Judeo-Christianity or Judeo-Christianism. And to clarify my point, I would like to start with the text of Ezekiel 20, to which I referred earlier, but I would like you to hear it in its entirety in order to realize what is going on. Now, the text goes, and please bear with me. I'm reading verses 13 to 26 very quickly. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my steps, but rejected my ordinances, by whose observance man shall live. And my Sabbaths they greatly profaned. Then I thought I would pour out my wrath upon them in the wilderness to make a full end of them. But I acted for the sake of my name, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations. And in all our theology, we always hear about, but considering my love for them. You don't hear that in the Bible. The love of God for us is in his commandment for us. But I acted for the sake of my name that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. As a footnote, I want you to hear it again from me. That's why the apostle is always irate with the Gentiles. He's not nice to them because the issue at hand is the honor of God. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most glorious of all lands, because they rejected my ordinances and did not walk in my statutes and profaned my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my art spared them, and I did not destroy them and make full end of them in the wilderness. And I said to their children in the wilderness, do not walk in the statutes of your fathers. Listen, the statutes of your fathers, nor observe their ordinances or defile yourselves with their idols. I, the Lord, am your God. Walk in my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. But the children rebelled against me. They did not walk in my statutes, and we have this repetition. But I withheld my hand, and I acted for the sake of my name. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the nations, 
and dispersed them through the countries whose idols they were interested to submit to. So God is playing a big trick on his people. You want to follow the idols? I'm going to help you follow the idols because they had not executed my ordinances but had rejected my statutes and profaned my Sabbaths and their eyes were set on their father's idols. Moreover, I gave them statutes that were not good and ordinances by which they could not have life and I defied them through their very gifts in making them offer by fire all their firstborn that I might horrify them. I did it that they might know that I am the Lord. Very important text. And if we take this seriously, then we realize that the text of the law in the Pentateuch is written retrospectively. I mean, even NATO scholarship admits that. Meaning that God sounds as though he has prepared the way because the people do not want to listen to him. And you have it as I detailed in chapters 32, 33, 34 of Exodus. While Moses was on the mountain getting the ordinances of God to transmit to the people, Aaron already was building the golden calf. Friends, this is very serious. And this will allow me to go back at the end of my presentation and remind you again, because I discussed that, that everything was already encapsulated in the book of Genesis, where you had a commandment, a direct commandment, by the way, linked to a tree that God had planted. This is what the text is saying. Now, theology doesn't like that. Do you mean that God really was planning to destroy us? No! He was not. Because he gave you the commandment not to do something. And you disobeyed. And I want to take a text from Numbers 21, 4 to 10. That would show you what I mean by the people turn around the command of God and instead of using it to honor their God, they use it to honor their idols. And to go back to Ezekiel, you have this in Ezekiel 16, which is before 20, where the people, the harloting wife, the city Jerusalem or Samaria, uses the gifts of God, you have to read that text, to honor their lovers whom she goes after. They do not come to her. Very clear in Ezekiel. Let me go now to the text of Numbers 21, 5 through 9. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Remember, these are the same people who were crying in Egypt for the Lord to save them. For there is no food and no water. So they are not interested to be obedient to God. They are interesting in their tummy. And we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. Let's hear it in the Hebrew. And God sent Hanuhashim, which is the plural of Nahash, which is the word used in Genesis 3 to speak about the tempter. But notice the addition of fiery. That doesn't mean anything in English. Just 
dump the KJV and the RSV. Learn Hebrew. The Hebrew says, Hanu Hashim Hafim Seraphim. There you go. And you know who the Seraphim are. But you don't hear that in the translation. You hear, as philosophy taught us, the meaning. It's like a teenager, mom. What do you mean when you tell me to clean the sink? Explain it philosophically to me. Han Hashim has And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Notice the hypocrisy. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. This prepared us for the text I'm going to quote again later, which I quoted way back from Jeremiah. And you do not pray for that people. Pray that he take away the serpents from us, because it sounds nicer in English. Since we mentioned serpents earlier, then we have to do serpents. But that's not the Hebrew of Richard Benton. The Hebrew of Richard Benton say, take away Hanahash in the singular. Why? Because, meaning the people are always facing a test when it comes to God. Will they stick with him or they will go after the Nahash as Adam did with Eve? So the Bible is one, friends, not because the theologians say there is one Bible and is one. No! It is the text that is one. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.